the beginning of this year, I made a video about Star Citizen's upcoming features for 2020. And unfortunately, that version of me didn't know just how badly this year would suck for everybody. Hey guys, I'm Morphologist and welcome back. I hope you guys are doing well. In this video, I want to give you guys an updated look at what we can expect to see by the end of this year, judging by the information that they've given us and what I've heard from some internal leaks. Because if you've been following the project these past six months, you'll know that there have been more delays and that has a lot to do, unfortunately, with them transitioning to a work at home style of development. That has meant that they've had to move portions of their equipment to their own personal homes, which has added additional delay to getting out patches and developing core important features for future big updates that we've discussed in the past. But if you stick around to the end of this video, I think you'll find yourself a bit more optimistic by the end, because even though there have been some negative leaks that have happened earlier this year, some recent news from CIG is really starting to look very positive and better than I expected for the end of 2020. There's always a light at the end of the tunnel, guys. You just sometimes have to squint real hard to see it. To understand the current state and direction of development in Star Citizen, we first need to talk about Squadron 42. Now, like it or not, even if you're here just for the MMO part of SC, it is going to have a massive impact on the next few updates, as well as the big patch at the end of this year, which is likely going to be called 4.0. 3.10, which was originally called 4.0, was going to have a number of really cool new features added to the PU, including our very own Cloud City in high atmosphere of the gas giant Crusader. But if you've been following development, then you'll know that that's sadly been removed from the roadmap, much to my own disappointment, as I'm sure it was to yours. Now, the patch itself has been downgraded to its current designation 310, but why? Well, part of this has, of course, to do with the delays concerning the current world crisis, but the other part of it is the less visible part of their focus on Squadron 42. If you didn't know, it was at multiple times explicitly stated by CIG that this year they would be focusing primarily on trying to get that into beta. So that brings us to the patches for the rest of this year. 3.10 and 3.11 are a little bit strange. It's not what we've typically seen in the past from CIG. There are nearly no new features, and much of the update is dedicated to polishing and refining existing key features like space combat, atmospheric combat, AI combat, and AI non-combat behaviors, as well as some visual upgrades. Now, to many, this is going to sound great, but to those of you who have been reading their dev posts, you'll remember that they at one point stated that the way they view alphas, well, the alpha first Star Citizen at least, is that they want to focus only on getting new features in and fixing it only to the point where it's playable. If it has bugs, fine, it just needs to be playable. So then why is this happening? Well, this ties into what I was talking to you about the focus on Squadron 42. Every one of these features coincides with a late polish phase on key features critical to Squadron 42. In other words, the state of the current updates are not just because of the crisis, but also because of their focus on trying to get that single player campaign done. The result is that the updates that we're getting for the most part, and I say for the most part because we are getting some new features, just overlap with Squadron 42. And this actually makes a lot of sense if a lot of their team is now focused on trying to get that out. They kind of really do need to get that out. But what does this mean then for the PU, the MMO part of Star Citizen? Are we going to still see pyro, jump points, server meshing? How about getting Crusader in? Is that even possible? Well, aside from Squadron 42, the other major blocker for getting Crusader done was the cloud tech. And that's something that to this date we haven't even seen a tech demo for. To be clear, the gas cloud tech that we've seen for Nebula are not the same because those are static but I suspect they're not completely unrelated. Now, I'm no graphics expert, but it seems to coincide with their current development of Gen 12 Vulcan, 
and that's something that's going to enable a lot of things that they need to accomplish their goals. It was stated by Chris Roberts, I believe, at the last Citizen Con that getting Vulcan in the game would enable things like thousands of more items in a given object container. It's that much of an improvement over the current renderer. It would also enable very cool things like additional particle effects, and what does that mean? Well, probably moving gas clouds, and that's what they need for an atmosphere for a gas giant. In fact, if you look at the current Crusader placeholder, the texture is actually moving. I bet you didn't know that. So is this delayed then? Well, no. One of the things is that they probably want to get this done for Squadron 42, and so, if you were paying attention to the emails, in the last monthly report that they gave us on Squadron 42, they noted that they think that they can get a first version up, at least internally, within the next three months. That means that we could possibly see an integration of an early version of Vulcan features in the next patch, not 3.10, but 3.11. Which runs counter to the stuff that we heard from the Star Citizen Leaks Discord channel, which said that they feared that they wouldn't be able to get it done this year. Clearly the last month they've made some big strides forward with this tech. So that leaves us with the next big item, and probably the biggest item of the year, and maybe the biggest update period ever, and that's Star Citizen's first jump point. It's a stepping stone to an even bigger game where you have many star systems, as was promised from the Kickstarter. At SitCon, we got our first look at what a jump point could look like in the game. This was not a pre-rendered scene, this was actually in the game engine and a functioning mechanic. But the blocker was, and they didn't explicitly say this, but we can glean this from all of their dev posts, is that server meshing just isn't ready yet. So will we see it by the end of this year? Well. This may be some of the best information you've heard so far. It looks like, both from leaked information about their internal plans, as well as their own posts on ISC, as well as in the subscriber vault, that they've gotten at least two moons or planets done in the Pyro system, and that they are shooting for at least a half a system release for the end of the year patch, being the big 4.0 patch in December. Which also means that they're going to have to get some early version of server meshing done as well as a jump point into that patch when they release it. Unfortunately though, for those of you who are fans of a Cloud City-like environment, it's very unlikely in my mind that we're going to see a Crusader by the end of this year. I expect that to probably be in the first patch of next year or maybe midway through next year because of the lack of development that I've seen on that moving gas cloud tech. But hey, I could be completely off on this because we do know that, for example, that some of those big nebula actually do move like in the coil and so there could be some relationship that they could apply to, say, a gas giant for moving clouds. But because we haven't heard anything both from leaks or internally, it's just like I said, unlikely that we're going to see that this year. But there's an additional silver lining to all of this, and that's server meshing is one of the core components of iCache. It's a system that communicates between servers that informs each server where items and players actually are. That means that, say for example, if you leave a ship out in the middle of a star system, that if you log back on the next time, it'll still be there. Right now, as it is, that doesn't happen, because once a server goes down, that information is lost. One additional feature that kind of lends credence to this idea is the addition in 3.11 of the Server Client Actor Networking Rework, which basically means that the server is going to better communicate and determine the location of players, items, and NPCs and convey that to your client so that you get less stuff like rubber banding which shouldn't be happening. So that's it guys, that's the basic gist of the internal information I've got so far. And there is a lot more stuff that we're going to be getting this year that I didn't talk about in this video, but these features that I spoke of really are the biggest, and if we get them into the game, it really is going to completely transform the experience into something much more akin to a true MMO. So I hope you enjoyed the video and the format of it. If you did, let me know down in the comments section below, and if you want to see me live, you can head on over to Twitch, which will be in the description below. But I also encourage you to check out our community Discord, which will also be linked there. I've been Morphologist, I hope to see you guys there. <laughs>